So we're going to look at uh, porn addiction, and uh, I do recommend that you actually go and look at the whole TED Talk, which is called The Great Porn Experiment. And so I'm going to let this gentleman do the talking, and then I'm going to mention some things that you might find interesting um, from, a, from, from a Quranic perspective. So let, let's, let him do uh, the talking for now. For us to say, it starts with lower reactions. To so he's talking about what happens when you get um, addiction to porn sites. Porn sites, then there is a general drop in libido, and in the end it becomes impossible to get an erection. There are three takeaways from this. First, Foresta is describing a classic addiction process, gradual desensitization. Second, internet porn is qualitatively different from Playboy. Widespread youthful ED has never been seen before. And finally... Yeah, by ED, he means uh, erectile dysfunction, which is the ultimate you know, consequence of porn addiction. ED is often the only symptom that gets these guys' attention. The question is, what less obvious symptoms are they missing? Most don't figure that out until after they quit. Here's a guy in his late 20s. I've been to psychologists and psychiatrists for the last eight years, have been diagnosed with depression, severe social anxiety, severe memory impairment, and a few others. Have tried Effexor, Ritalin, Xanax, Paxil, dropped that at two different colleges, been fired twice, used pot to calm my social anxiety, I've been approached by quite a few women, I guess due to my looks and status, but they quickly flew away due to my incredible weirdness. I've been a hardcore porn addict since age 14. For the last two years, I've been experimenting and finally realized that porn was an issue. I stopped it completely two months ago. It has been very difficult, but so far, incredibly worth it. I've since quit my remaining medication. My anxiety is non-existent. My memory and focus are sharper than they've ever been. I feel like a huge chick magnet and my ED is gone too. I seriously think I had a rebirth, a second chance at life. This is why pockets of guys are appearing all over the web, bodybuilding sites, sports sites, pickup artist sites, wherever men congregate. In essence, they are seeking a neurochemical rebirth. Here's a so <clears throat> let me um, actually go over uh, to uh, you can say right over here. Okay, so Ward circuit. Now with excess chronic consumption of drugs or natural reward. Uh, by natural rewards, he means uh, you know porn. This buildup of Delta Phos B starts to alter the brain and promotes a cycle of binging and craving. If the binging continues, the Delta Phos B builds up and it can lead to brain changes seen in all addicts. So the dominoes are excess con consumption, excess dopamine, Delta Phos B, brain changes. Dopamine is the pleasure response, okay? So when you start porn, um what happens, you become numbed, you have to, and, and that's in any, any drug, you need more and more drug and more and more drug, and then after that you'll see. One of the first changes is a numb pleasure response. It kicks in, and so everyday pleasures really don't satisfy a porn addict. At the same time, other physical changes in the brain make the brain hyperreactive to porn. Everything else in the porn user's life is sort of boring, but porn is super exciting. Finally, his willpower arose as his frontal cortex changes. This I is, can't emphasize this enough. All addict This is important, especially for Muslims, because, you know, they, they, they begin to lose willpower. It's harder and harder to change. And so um, maybe one time I will talk about what Muslims should do if they're not able to just break out of it or snap out of it. Um, basically, the, the one tip I'll give right now is that, you know, yes, your goal is to get rid of this, but as long as you're not 
out of it, try to reduce it to uh, as little as you can and do tahara so you can at least pray. You know, so do it in a way where it's done and you do your tahara and you can pray. So at least that way you're not missing your prayers because it really hurts a, at least a practicing Muslim's um, self-esteem when they're not able to, um, when they're beginning to lose prayers because of this. And when they feel that, you know, they're chained into this habit. Um, Addictions share these same brain changes and the same molecular switch that kicks them in, delta Fos B. Now, scientists have used brain scans to measure these changes in drug addicts. Up here, these scans show a reduced pleasure response in drug addicts. These and several other changes have also been seen in gambling addicts, food addicts, very recently in video game addicts and now in internet addicts. I apologize for filling up this slide with brain studies. Just notice the dates, but I want you to know that they exist. So far, all brain research points in only one direction. Constant novelty at a click. Constant novelty, but novelty, what he means by that is that you see something new and then you see something new and you get something new and you get something new. So this, you know, kind of getting something new by the second or by the minute or whatever it is, um, is what he's referring to. Can cause addiction. Now we know this because when scientists examined former internet addicts, they found that these brain changes were reversing themselves. Unfortunately, none of these studies isolate porn users, but they do include them. Here's the game changer. At last, we have a group of guys who are no longer using internet porn. That's right, heavy users are voluntarily giving it up by the thousands. These guys are the missing control group in the great porn experiment. They're showing experts what changing one single variable can do. I call it the resurrection of guys as opposed to the... Now, I'd like to stop here. It's interesting he calls it the resurrection of guys uh, because... Um, I want to bring to your attention um, some Quranic terminologies. Haya, as you know, uh, it's not just in the Arabic language, but also used in different Muslim languages, including Urdu and uh, Farsi, where Haya means modesty, but Haya also means life. And Fahisha means immodesty. And it's very interesting, it's the same word, Haya and Haya. Haya means, or Hayat, you know, Haya, Haya, Haya means life and it also means modesty. What's the connection? The connection is that modesty equals a life of positive energy, meaning you're not losing your willpower, right? You're not uh, losing your self esteem, you're not feeling a type of numbness which leads to depression and so on and so forth. Immodesty, Fahisha, is a negative energy taking over, right? And so there's no numbness, willpower, your willpower, and then your self-esteem being affected. And then also another way that's interesting is that if you do immodesty, it affect, meaning the opposite of modesty, it begins to affect your life in what way? Life as in reproduction, because then you're, you get ED, erectile dysfunction, and you're not able to function properly sexually to reproduce. So these are some interesting correlations in the Quran between why, interestingly enough, the word haya, which means modesty, also means life. Um, so let's just go back and uh, listen to what he's saying and we'll just end. The demise of guys. Now before I continue, you probably want to know why any porn loving guy in his right mind would give it up. <laughs> Two words, erectile dysfunction. Internet porn is killing young men's sexual performance. Now, Zimbardo said young guys are flaming out with women. This survey by Italian neurologist confirms what we have witnessed over the last few years. Now, sexual yeah, enhancement drugs often stop working for these guys if they ever did because the problem isn't below the belt where Viagra works, nor is the problem really psychological. It's due to physical changes in the brain, those addiction-related changes. 
their number meaning uh, their actual physical changes in the brain and what's interesting about that is that um it, there are changes in the in in the frontal uh the the over here okay the prefrontal cortex and this is the part that helps you actually make good decisions um so so it affects how you are making decisions also um so some things to consider okay thank you assalamu alaikum peace be upon you